good, James. Turn the mic on. Hey, you got somewhere to go? <laughs> I see you looking around like, boy, hurry up. <laughs> yes, sir, boss. You saying that. <laughs> James. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. House of Israel. Happy Sabbath. I'm starting from uh, coming from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. 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 First and foremost, we always like to get we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Today we're going to deal with a lesson. We're going to give you the title. The title of the lesson is Godly Honor. Godly Honor. The reason why I've done this lesson. Because of what I what I see out here, here in the world, people want so much honor, but they don't understand what it's a godly honor. But I'm gonna give you the definition of honor first. Honor is a person having a good name or reputation, or a person that have respect. That's honor. And people today are trying to get honor the world we get honor, which is by manipulation, whether it be sex, money, drugs, or threatening people, threatening people, whether it be uh, abuse, fear. These are the things that the world teaches us how to get honor amongst people. And these types of honor don't last very long because once your strength Whatever you have strength in and leads you, what do you have? You have the real you. Now, if your honor comes by money, your honor comes by sex, your honor comes by manipulation, whatever it is, your honor don't last very long because we only here for a short amount of time with strength. And believe me, you want to have this godly honor. Godly honor, it lasts. He protects you. And he shows you how to, to be an honorable man or honorable woman. Instead of being the, the, this world honor, honorable person. But I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 23 first. Turn to Matthew chapter 23. We're going to look at somewhere here. We're going to read one verse, verse 12. It's off the lesson. Just want to make sure everybody understands about honor. Everybody in the world wants it. Everybody in the world wants respect. Everybody in the world wants some type of accolade. But they don't know how to get it. Honor is earned. Honor is earned. It's never at a type where you can take honor. Because if you got to take it, it's not going to last very long. So we're going to read one verse here. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Yes, sir. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. This is what the Lord said. Don't spend so much time trying to exalt yourself. Believe me, when you try to exalt yourself, it's short-lived. 
If I try to exalt myself, it's short lived. You just do it correctly how the book say do it. Don't worry about it. People will respect you because of what you stand for. People look for integrity. And the best type of integrity to have is following the law. Follow the law. So let's turn to 1 Peter. No, no, I just want to read one verse there. 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 11. Let's understand how we're supposed to honor people. And most of all, who are you supposed to honor? Because you got lots of people out here <clears throat> honoring people that don't earn a minute of your time. But we're going to learn this lesson. You got to show honor to everybody. Everybody. Whether it be male, whether it be female, whether it be child, whether it be anybody that's in this world, you show honor to them. Honor to them. Because if you want that respect, Believe me, you got to give it to somebody else. First Peter chapter 2, we're going to start with verse 11. And get the brother, go ahead. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. This is what we got to battle with, the fleshly lust. They ain't just talking about sexual lust. It could be any kind of lust that is not of God. The lust for money. The lust for attention. The lust of just anything that is not righteous. It's a battle. And the only way you're going to help this flesh, you got to make sure you put this word in. Go ahead. Verse 12. <clears throat> Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Yes, sir. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You see what he said? Having your conversation, what you talking about? Honest. Amongst who? The Gentiles. Gentiles. Because whether most people don't understand, the Gentiles or the Europeans, they run it. They run the world. So if you out there being disrespectful to police officers, judges, uh, people that's over your job, who run the companies, it's not going to end up well. You're not going to be honorable at all. They gonna, the first time they really get rid of somebody, you're going to be on the top of the list. You got to build this honor. It's earned. And how do you earn it? You find out how God's in earn it. Having a godly honor. He said, whereas they speak amongst you, you as evil dwellers. Read that, Finney. Read that again. Verse 12. Yeah. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Yes, sir. That whereas they speak evil, as whereas they speak against you as evildoers, uh -huh. they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. See what he said? By your good work. They speak evil against you. They're going to say, you know what? Brother Jeff, I don't like what he's saying. He tells us we're going to hell, but he's a good work. He ain't going to try to sleep my wife. He ain't going to try to lie to him on purpose. He's going to try to justify everything he say. It's got to be honorable. Your conversation. Amongst who? The Gentiles. Go ahead. Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. How many? Every ordinance. Just the police officer. Every ordinance. Just the judge. Every ordinance. Just your husband, your wife. Every ordinance. Every ordinance. It's the laws of the land. You got to submit yourself to it. Go ahead. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. For whose sake? For the Lord's sake. Lord's sake. Go ahead. Whether it be to the king as supreme. See what it said? Whether it be from the president of the United States, whether a supreme ruler or a dictator. Submit yourself. Whatever the rules of the land is, the laws of the land is, follow them. As long as don't go above God's law. Go ahead. 14. Or unto governors. Yes, sir. As unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Yes, sir. And for the praise of them that do well. See, God put these people up in higher position. He set up kings and take down kings. That's what people don't understand. He set them up. That's right, man. So we think we can vote somebody out? No, oh, sir. <laughs> you better look at this book right way. These people, he says, to honor them. That means respect them. Because you want to get respected. Go ahead. Verse 15. 
For so is the will of God yes, sir. that with well doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. See, that's the thing about it. You follow, when you follow foolish men, they're going to tell you to go against people for the, in the wrong way. Foolish men. If this man ain't led by God, he's foolish. I don't care how good he's sound. Don't let no man that's not led by God lead you. But you honor him. That's the difference now. All right, brother, I ain't going to call you out your name. I disrespect you. I'm just going to walk away. What well, the book say? Depart from the presence of who? Of a foolish. Depart. That's all you do. You honor him by leaving. Go ahead. Verse 16. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. For a cloak of maliciousness? What is that? Maliciousness? Maliciousness. It's that don't use this as something that you can exhort evil stuff, evil things against people, like a cloak. It's your demeanor, how you are. Go ahead. 17. Under all men. How many men? All men. He's talking about a woman too now. He's just talking about a male. Woman is a female. Uh, is a, is a, a woman also is a man. Talking about the male species. Under who? All men. Go ahead. Love the brotherhood. Yes, sir. Fear God. Honor the king. God keep telling us how to honor people. Honor them. If you want honor, you want respect. Honor people. I don't care if you don't like them. Still honor. That's why I have the utmost respect for the for the brothers and sisters that are in the house of Israel. You'll never hear me talk say nothing against no teacher. No teacher. Because I understand. I don't put my mouth on the man of God. Period. If you put your mouth on the man of God, guess what? God listening. I'm going to show you the lesson. He listening. He going to deal with you. We got to know who we need to honor. Go ahead. 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. See what he said? Don't be uh, 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 honorable to the good and gentle. If he treat me right, she treat me right. No, he said also to the forward. Who ain't going to talk to you nicely? Who going to tell it to you straight? This is what you must do. Police officer say, hey, get your behind out of the car and get on the ground. You get out. You do what he say. They tell you, you can't come up here and, and open your business up on COVID-19. I'm going to do what they say. I'm going to honor this. Because if you don't honor this, guess what? They control the laws of the land. Go ahead. Verse 19. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. So that's a part of being a Christian? This is about calling somebody to call you out your name or say something to you that's wrong or that you don't like, disrespect you. You got to endure grief. Endure it. Suffering wrongfully. That's hard. Man. I feel you on that. That's hard. Go ahead. 20. For what glory is it if when he be buffeted for your faults? What is buffeted? You got to make sure you get exercised or corrected in your faults. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's what he's saying. He said, for glory is when ye are buffeted in your faults. Take glory in it. Like, I'm so glad God with me because I'm going to do the same thing. And next time, I might get killed. Go ahead. Top of 20. Mm -hmm. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? Yes, sir. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. You got to take the good with the bad. And people watch you that's in an honorable position. They, they, they take a little test and see how you react to stuff. If you react all panicky and you give them a lip, oh no, I can't have him being a leader. I can't have set him up and let people honor him. I can't have that person doing that because he's not equipped. He'll throw the whole thing off. Same thing about the man of God, too. If you're being led by emotions, a lot of times in this, in this walk, you're going to throw it off as a man or woman of God. We're looking for the godly honor. 
We try to understand how God see honor, not the way the world see honor. The world see honor, you got a car, some money, some clothes, and you on TV, you playing football, basketball, or oh, we honor them, they role models. And the people that you should be honoring is telling you what thus says the Lord to keep you out of the hell fire. Amen. That's what it is. Go ahead. 21. For even hereunto were ye called, mm -hmm. because Christ also suffered for us. Yes, sir. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So Christ, you got to follow Christ's steps. Go back and research how he walked. They call him a devil. They crucified, killed him. They did everything to him. Disrespect him. We're going to suffer some of that. But if you're too emotional, you can't get it. You can't get that honor. Go ahead. 22. Who did no sin, neither was God find it, found in his mouth. Yes, sir. Who, when he was reveled, reveled not again. Mm -hmm. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. See what he said? <laughs> when, he came, when they came against him, he closed his mouth. He ain't come at them harshly or telling them, look, when I come back, I'm going to tear y'all up. He just closed them out and took them. Go ahead. 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Yes, sir. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes he were healed. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For ye were as sheep going astray, mm -hmm. but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. This is, this is the most honorable man in the book. Jesus and what he did. He's our example of a godly honor. Period. So we must learn from the examples of the book. I can't sit up here and tell you every example of what happened to me, how I get honor. I got to go to the book and give y'all examples of the men and women of God to get honor. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Let's get more detail. Because we got to be found out in that book, you got to get everybody on. All men on, including women too. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. You can't be out here disrespecting people because you're going to make your, work, your life hard, very hard. And I see that Israel problem right now. We're very disrespectful as a nation. Very. And we disrespect the wrong people. And that's why God put this boom on us. He's bringing the pain on us as a nation. Because people don't bring lessons out like this. They want you to feel all happy, go, go, joy, joy. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but you got to have some correction. I got to have some correction. Verse 16, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Yes, sir. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. What's in your mind? That's what he's saying. Psalms and hymns. He ain't talking about just singing the psalms and then the book. Singing knowledge of God. Let it be dwell in you richly. It should you should every almost a lot a lot of words that you say should, a lot of words that you say should be about God. Go ahead. Seventeen. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. I absolutely is all. So in everything you do, you give it all to God. Yes, sir. Everything. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husband, you got to be honorable to be able to, for a wife to submit and follow you. And the way she submit and follow you, she fear God. If she don't fear God, she do whatever she want to do, how she feel. And most of all, you got to make sure as a husband, bring the word to her, and she got to bring it to you when you are out of line. Everybody is in submission to everybody. Everybody need to honor everybody. And believe me, I need to work on this a lot. Go ahead, brother. 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. This is the problem. A lot of bitterness out here. As a husband, for the husbands. Love your wife. Love her. He's just telling you just, okay, you just making them put a mind on cloud nine. 
He wants to make sure you put in the right position in the book to prosper. You can tell her, no, no, this is what the Lord said not to do. Or he said, yeah, go ahead. You got to know something as a, as a husband to direct your family, especially your wife. And we're going to find out. Your wife's got to know something to help you. The most righteous and the honorable man in the book, his wife saved his life. Go ahead. Verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. Yes, sir. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Talk about the children. Obey your parents in all things. He ain't leaving nobody out. Everybody got to show honor to everybody. Go ahead. 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. He tells them, don't provoke your father, don't provoke your kids to anger. Tear them, tear them down, tell them they ain't going to be nothing in life. Or just say, oh, you just like your mama, sorry. Or you just like your grandma, all them things. You don't need to say that stuff. Because you can discourage your child. And they're going to be what you put in them, too. Go ahead. 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Yes, sir. Not with our service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. What do you mean by not with our service? As long as you see me serving like the boss. When the boss is away, I'll play. But as long as the boss he see me, I'm going to be a good, good worker. No, you got to be a good worker when the boss ain't here. He said servants. Just like your wife got to be a good wife when you ain't there. Your husband got to be a good wife when you ain't there. Your children got to be good kids when you ain't there. Because they understand what you taught them. You got to get that honor in them. Go ahead. 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. See, that's the problem. When the book said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, they don't understand that. Anytime Satan can influence us to do something. But if we take it out on that person and try to hurt them, kill them, we act in, in our flesh. No, you just pray for them. Pray for them. Read that again. 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Do it because the Lord wants you to do it, not just because that man wants you to do it. He first. Because he's going to bring honor. God going to bring honor to you. Because he sees your integrity. Even though your boss, your husband, your wife ain't around, you still hold it to your honor of your vows, of your position, of your job. You still hold it. No, no, I don't care if he ain't around or she ain't around. You still hold it. Amen. And he said, I'm going to exalt you because you were, was humble at that time. You couldn't go out there and step out. You couldn't go out there and stole something. You couldn't go out there and just sat on the clock. You couldn't get all this stuff. But no, you said, no, I'm going to make sure I do it. Just like my boss, my husband, my wife, my kids here. Because you honorable. Go ahead. 24. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of their inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. This is what we're we here for. To receive the what? The inheritance. What is the inheritance? The land. The kingdom of God. That's why we are making sure we respect all men so we won't get outside of this flesh and sin. Go ahead. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. Yes, sir. And there is no respect to persons. No respect to persons for that. If you're doing wrong, you're going to get punished. I'm going to get punished. And understand, this is what people got to understand about a godly honor. It comes with both of them, the good and the bad. You finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Romans chapter 13. Let's start with the man of God. And why we should honor him. Because the man of God is very, very important. And people dishonor the real man of God and cause them pain on their life and they don't even understand. You got to make sure that you don't put your mouth on the man of God. Period. Romans chapter 13, we'll start with verse 4. Go ahead. Verse 4. Yeah. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. 
-hmm. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Mm -hmm. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God. A revenge is to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. See, when the minister of God is in his rightful spot, he going to minister to you correction. What thus saith the Lord. It might not sound good, it might hurt your feelings and all this stuff, but he got a job to do as a minister of God. Go ahead. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. He said, now, you must need to be subject to him. Not unto wrath. He said, wherefore, you need to be subject to him, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Meaning, what you, for what's in your mind? Your conscience. For your conscience sake. So you can be calm when this pain hits you. It's going to come as a man, a woman of God, or anybody that's a Christian. You're going to suffer a little bit. And just because somebody correct you, in making you more honorable. Go ahead. Verse 6. For for this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. He said, for this cause you pay tribute. What is tribute? Honor. You pay tribute to him. You don't speak bad about him. You don't speak bad about her. You don't speak bad about nobody. He said your conversation need to be godly. Especially the man of God. Go ahead. Seven. Render therefore to all their dues. Yes, sir. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. He said, render therefore to all their dues. You whatever they do, if they're doing their job, respect them. Give them they just do as you hear people say. Just do meaning that he earned it, she earned it. He said, tribute, respect, honor. That's tribute to whom tribute is due. That's double honor to the man of God. He said, custom to whom custom. Fear whom, fear whom you fear. Honor to whom honor. And we're going to break down all these people you're supposed to be honoring. He already told them we should honor all man. But I'm going to show you why. We finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let's see one of the men of God so you won't be out there honoring the wrong people, the wrong pastor, the wrong preacher. Let's see what his characteristics should be. Godly honor. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Because we got to know who the man of God, what he looked like. And we're going to cover everybody, don't worry. I'm going to just start with the minister first. Hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and we're going to start with verse 9. Let's see what a godly minister is who, who must retain, retain honor. Go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. This is what a man of God is supposed to be, supposed to do. Come in church, open this book up, set in line. Many proverbs, many scriptures, so you can understand what does say the Lord. We ain't here to entertain nobody. We're not here to entertain nobody. Go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. So this is why we read so much. When I put these lessons together, I'm sitting up here thinking like, hey, man, what, what, what y'all tell me? What we lacking at? Put together acceptable words. I ain't telling you to come in here and turn to Jeff chapter 20. I ain't telling you to go to another book. We're looking in the Bible to see the acceptable words of the Lord. A preacher, this is John. Go ahead. Verse 11. The words of the wise, the words of the wise are as gold. Yes, sir. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. The words of God is gold. That's like a hammer, like a nail. You can bank on it. It's going to happen. Given to who by one shepherd. And we know who that one shepherd is. Jesus. Go ahead. And further, by these, my son, be admonished, 